Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We got another Pro Drifter Reacts. We're checking out Ken Gushi today. He is one of the absolute OGs in Formula Drift US. We did die last week. Dang, he pulled on Forsberg there. That's pretty good. And a lot of you guys get them mixed up. So they're two different people. Just so you know. Performance GR Supra. Been drifting for about 20 years, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. So I believe he was born in Japan, is from Japan, but he's been living out in California, I think, pretty much since he started doing Formula Drift. And uh, instead of focusing more on the operations of the team, I want to put a lot more of my focus into the driving aspect and being a little bit more competitive on track while trusting and relying on my team members to uh, do the outside work. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it's freaking tough. Like, <clears throat> I'm not gonna sit and say I'm like some fancy team owner because we're still trying to figure it out, but I have never been under another team. It's always been my team, I put it together and manage it. It's freaking hard. And like, I've always kind of been a little bit jealous of some of the guys that have been under teams, but I've learned a lot doing it. And I guess it's, I guess, we'll see if it pays off, right? This year we're doing Formula Drift uh, Japan, so we'll see how that works. Yeah, just uh, running off of what we learned in 20, coming out full swinging for 2021. My biggest rival on, in the Formula Drift circuit would have to be- Come on, call somebody out. No, I uh, said it himself. Chicago. Who is it? Uh, yeah. Is it For yeah, let them know. Uh, they would all be considered my rivals, but the biggest rival would have to be fighting my mental aspect of you know, overcoming the bigger challenges on track. You know, I respect that. Like, I feel that's my my biggest issues have either been fighting with like people in my team that have just like not done their jobs. What's, hey, what's going on some here? Labels for really? Did you ever? Did you ever get in grade school? It's all spelt wrong. Unbelievable, dude. God damn it. Um, or my mental health. Um, so I definitely, I feel you can. My favorite thing about Formula Drift, uh, which is what I really realized last year going through the 2020 was that the fans are definitely what makes Formula Drift special. And, um, you know, without them, we truly wouldn't be where we are today. I want to say I've been saying that, but I've been saying that. Ooh. It is because of you guys that we even get to do this stuff. These events wouldn't exist if no one watched them. So I feel like a lot of people lose focus on that and they, they that's kind of where the egos come into play and stuff. Dude. Unreal, dude. Unreal. Um, but it's like, this sport is about entertaining and it's about the fans. And that's been my thing since day one is like, I want to be an entertainer. First and foremost, I care the most about the fans over anyone else. I don't care about the other drivers, the sponsors, any of that compared to the level I care about the fans. So I love hearing that from Ken, that's really cool. Okay, I thought this was kind of a rad video. This is from Super Street. It's um, Ken Gushi and Matt Field at Nico Circuit. So they're just kind of experiencing a traditional Japan drift day. I'm not quite sure who's driving what, but uh, by the way, Nico, like I have not driven it in real life yet, but that's essentially gonna be home base for when I'm stationed in Japan. And it's like, that, that track's super close to where the car is. So that's gonna be basically home track. I've driven it a bunch on the sim. So freaking fun. I absolutely love it. God, let's go. Look at the two hands on the steering wheel. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not sure if that's Ken driving or not, but just still like proper, whoever was driving there. God, all the A86s. All right, that was freaking sick, but not quite as sick as our merch. Hogginracing.com. I got one of our t-shirts on right now. Go check it out. We got stickers, the boy flags, all sorts of stuff. Support your boy. All right, back to the video. All right, so we got a little bit of history on Ken Gishi. So I'm traveling to Japan. Now let's look at some runs from this last season. So I know that he had a bit of a rough season. That's kind of part of the game, right? So he has still a fairly new car. Um, I think it, he said it was his second year being the team owner and manager. So there's a lot on his shoulders and a lot has changed for him. So lead did not go well. I mean, basically, he had some type of mechanical there. So that runs now a zero. The only way he can essentially move on is if Justin gets a zero and he completes his run. And then they would do it one more time. Yeah, he's having issues because I mean, Pollock's car is super fast, but yeah, he didn't even get the drift. All right, let's see. So Ken is in the chase here in Orlando. Nice flick entry though, that's sick. And Ken's right with them, so look at how he, let's see how he entered that, how he approached that. So that's like, Formula Drift has really gone all nose to tail. Like, and I keep talking about that in the sim drifting videos where I'm practicing for Formula Drift Japan. 
Uh, there used to be a lot like, you know, going on the side, but just the way that the entries are set up and the speeds, it seems to me nose to tail is kind of the, the route, especially when people do a big flick like this, which I do a lot. Um, if you're at the side of them, you have to be that much further down to let allow them to do their flick. If you stop their flick, you're, it's, it's your problem, it's not theirs. They're allowed to do a flick like that. And so then if you think about if you're on the bank and you start to the side of them, you're way lower on the bank and you have to climb your way up. So this is absolutely a nose of tails. So Ken did this super proper. And he let him do his flick and just kind of handbrake entry right behind him. That's honestly probably a smart move. Um, let's see how it pays off. So he's good, he's right there in the pocket. He's a little lower line. That's what, see, that's what I'm wondering if the handbrake entry like didn't work for him there. I know he did that so he could maintain that proximity and just do like a safe entry in the chase. Um, but it set him on a lower line. He's just like, I don't know if he's having car issues or what, but he's just like not that aggressive here. I mean, his proximity is not bad. Like he's definitely in the battle, but there was no like attack, you know? All right, let's see in the lead. Now I'm interested, I wanna see if he does a handbrake or a flick. So now he does a flick. See, but what did, this is so interesting to watch. That was, see, they both did flicks. Oh, so interesting. Oh, look, Ken is right on the wall there. This is a great lead line. See, Jones is getting aggressive on him, and like, that's, like, Jones, I'll bet anything Jones wins this battle. Look at him. So I don't know if Ken's having, like, mental stuff. See, that's the stuff you guys don't see and don't know about. And, like, I'm just gonna get, I'm just gonna harp for a second, like, my Pro 2 season was terrible, my rookie season, right? And people like still hate on me for it, but it's like you guys didn't see what I was going through and what I was dealing with. All you saw was the like couple seconds I had on live stream, right? So it's like with Ken, I could sit here and say as a spectator like, oh, he sucks, he's not aggressive, but who knows what was going on? I mean, he could have been depressed as shit that day. Like his dog could have died. You have no idea what happened. Or like, you know, they had scrambled to get the car together and someone didn't do their job. Like there's all sorts of things that you guys don't know about. So it's like, I'm asking for myself and everyone that's a competitor in Formula Drift and all drifting, like just chill a little bit. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. All right, this is kind of a, just like a cool stylistic video, but it looked interesting to me. So it's Masato Kawabata versus Ken Gushi. Toyota GT86 versus Nissan GTR. Comment below if we should do a pro reacts to Kawabata. He's a legend. So Ken's in the front. Oh my god, this is sick. I sound like a toge too. Look at that freaking oh my god. That's so gnarly, you guys. I'm telling you. Like it's easy to watch this stuff and think like, oh I could do that. It's, it's that doesn't look too bad, but yeah, there's guardrails on both sides, but cars can go over guardrails. That's gnarly. Let's take some balls. Kawabata is on him too. My god. Okay, so I thought this would be cool. A lot of times when I do these reacts, I'm always looking at the most polished, like videos and pro cars. This is him just having doing some fun drifting in a street car with friends. Like, this is cool. Nice little flick entry into like a handbrake. Back to two hands. This is a good view. Like, I like these kind of videos too because it shows that like Ken is a normal guy. You know what I mean? Like, he still loves just shredding with the boys, having some fun. What the heck, he put a sequential in this thing now? What a maniac. Oh my God, the entry was sick. That, like, he is way more aggressive in this video than the other one we were watching. Get the man a sequential and he's a maniac. All right, so this is him shredding at final bout. With the sequential. This car looks like really freaking dialed. I'm telling you guys, sequentials are like the sickest thing. They're like a cheat, but after experiencing it in the R32, like I'm pretty obsessed. I just want to make everything sequential. It's so cool. Because it takes a lot of the driver error out of it, and you can also like shift so easily. Upshift and downshift because it'll automatically rev match for you. So you can downshift mid drift if you want. You can upshift. Like, it's just, it's so chill. I don't even know how to explain it. It's, it's a game changer, absolutely.
All right, guys, well, that was Ken Gushi in a nutshell. I wish him more luck on this next season. I hate seeing people have car troubles and team troubles and stuff like that, because that's mainly what I've dealt with my whole career as well. So I can, I can definitely relate to that on some levels. Anyways, who should I react to next? We're gonna run out of drivers eventually, and we're just gonna have to figure out a new series, but <laughs> let me know who you guys wanna see. I know we still missed some good ones. Hit that subscribe button, check out our merch, and we'll see you guys soon. Peace.